We're at the Secret Garden Cafe in Charles Street in Newport, and tonight, well, I'm going to, read some of the letters which Percy Scannell, the soldier, sent to his family who lived at this particular house. A descendant of Percy gave a collection of photographs and letters to the museum from February 1917, right up to more or less the day he died. There are a number of letters that have been deposited in the museum into the collection, but there isn't such a complete set. I don't know if any of you realise it, but it's exactly 101 years ago today yeah. that Britain declared war on Germany. This very building in which you're sitting tonight became the family home in 1917 of the Scannels. Father William ran the cobbler shop from this very room, whilst upstairs became the family home. He joined up, but he was only 17 in 1914, and it wasn't until 1917, when he was about 19, that he was actually sent on active service. Monday, the 5th of February, 1917. Dear Mother and Dad, We arrived at Rouen on Monday morning after a rather rough journey. We were 38 hours on the water, a little longer than it takes going to Weston. My latest pal, who I've been going with, his name is Prosser, and he's from St Melons and we've been palling up since we left Rouen. He's a very nice chap. Of course I shall come back all right after the war is over. You bet. Well, cheer up, mother dear, and don't be downhearted because I'm not. March 24th. You always used to tell me it's much better to be born lucky than rich. Well, I agree with you. I had two parcels the day before yesterday, one from Aunt Tilly and the other from a girl in Oswestry. Street. The one from Auntie Tilly contained a tin of salmon, two tins of tea tablets, a packet of chocolate, a lovely cake, about a pound of biscuits and other articles. The other parcel contained a box of 50 gold flake and a cake and a box of chocolates. Now what do you think of that good luck? He worked his way through a series of battles, the Battle of Arras, Femi Ridge, eventually ending at the Third Battle of Ypres. The Battle of Arras commenced on the 9th of April 1917, and the battalion were immediately put to work on the roads leading up to the battlefront. 24th of June. Dear Mother and Dad, however will you forgive me for getting your birthday? You will know that I didn't mean anything. And if it's not too late now, I wish you many very happy returns of the day. On the 29th of June, the battalion were working on the banks of the Issa Canal, which ran to the north of what remained of Eats. The battalion were initially involved in digging dugouts into the banks of the canal under the eyes of the German gunners who were raining down shells on them. They were building two causeways across the canal which the infantry would advance across at zero hour. As fast as they built it, the German artillery smashed it down. The first battle opened on the 31st of July and the Monmouthshires played their role. They immediately started work on constructing tracks and repairing trenches under consistently heavy fire. The battalion began to work on constructing light railways, which would bring all the equipment needed for the further advances and for the evacuation of the wounded troops. As soon as daylight appeared, shells rained down again, destroying the night's work. As soon as darkness fell, they'd be out again, rebuilding and moving equipment forward. This was the last letter that the family received from Percy. Caribou Camp, 22nd of August. Dear Mother and Dad, just a few lines to let you know I'm feeling A1 and in the pink. Hope you are all quite well at home. The weather here for the last week has been lovely. But how's it faring with you? I can't think of anything else to write about. Hoping to hear from you soon, I remain your loving son, Percy. On the 26th of August, two soldiers were wounded. Sadly, one of those was Percy. He was taken to an advanced dressing station and unfortunately it appears his condition was regarded as terminal. He would have been made as comfortable as possible and died that day. He was buried at the back of the first aid post in what was a small and growing burial ground. The family received the dreadful news a few days later. It's my painful duty to inform you that a report has been received from the War Office notifying the death of Private Percy James Scannell, Monmouthshire Regiment. In mid-February 1918, a small parcel arrived here. 
It contained the few items that had been removed from Percy's body at the first aid station. Two identity discs, letters, photos, one leather photo case, wallet, one wristwatch and strap, one wrist disc and chain, one cigarette case, <coughs> one chain and key, and key attachment, one ring and playing cards. This photograph of Percy with his mates in the second mons was almost certainly sent home to this very place and now it would become a permanent feature on the walls of the secret garden. Oh. <laughs>